guys, welcome back to Sarah Livingston Designs. Today I'm going to be doing a DIY project that I like to call usable art. And you just saw the final product of it. I'm going to be doing one version that is very similar to the one you saw before, as well as one that uses t-shirts rather than jeans. So let's get started. clothing that you're using. So for this project, like I said, I'm going to be making a similar replica to the one I originally made, which is why I have a bunch of old jeans. And it was great timing because my sister was cleaning out her room. And so I took a bunch of the jeans that she was going to get rid of. They were super worn down. So I didn't feel like I was, you know, cutting up a pair of jeans that could be used by someone else. Um, and they were some of her favorite jeans, so I thought it'd be a great thing to make for her and give her as something that she could put up in her space, even though she wasn't wearing these jeans anymore. The next one, I'm doing more of a memory art-based one rather than the functional side of things. However, the functional ones, I listed a bunch of options in the comments, things like flannels, sweatshirts, things that have pockets and kind of different things that you can loop stuff on. And so there's a bunch of ideas down there. In terms of the more memento art things, for this one I'm going to be doing a bunch of different old sports shirts, um, championship shirts, tournament shirts. I and I think many others have accumulated so many of these and I don't wear them anymore, but I don't want to get rid of them. And so rather than having them just take up space in a drawer, this is a great way to put them on a wall, see them more often, even though you're not wearing them. So once again, there are a bunch of other options for things like this in the comments. Other than that, you need corkboard. Um, originally, for my first one, I used one that had a frame on it. That works perfectly fine. For this one, I had these laying around, so I figured I'd use these. I think a lot of people have corkboard laying around. So once again, great project for that reason. And then this one, there's just four panels. So that's what I'm gonna be using. Lastly, you need spray glue. Any kind works, but this is the one I had. You need fabric scissors. Regular scissors will also work, but since you're cutting fabric, these work the best. And then lastly, this is definitely not a necessary thing, but I just have push pins so that once I finish this, I can use it like a regular cork board. So not very many things you need for this. Really great project and I'm excited to share the process with you guys. What I'm doing here is really a trial and error process. I'm finding pieces of the jeans that I either like the look of or the function of, and then I'm just cutting those out and arranging them on the board in an area that I think looks good. It doesn't have to fit perfectly, and it's really all about what you like. This is the final product of that. I trimmed the edges of the jeans one and then I repeated that process for the t-shirts. However, I kept the edges on the t-shirts because I want to wrap them around the sides and I want excess fabric to do that. The gluing process is pretty self-explanatory. Just spray the glue on to the fabric and place it onto the cork board. For the t-shirts, I ended up using staples and the easiest way is to start with one side, staple it in the middle and then work your way around. And I will show you how to do the corners more specifically. For the corners, I wanted to show a more close-up version. Essentially what you do is you pull all the fabric away from the corner tuck one side underneath and then fold the other side over. And then it's gonna go past the edge and so you're gonna fold it back over, which is what I'm doing here. And then just keep checking the corner to make sure that it's clean and goes around pretty tightly. It'll give you a really clean corner that you don't have to worry about it getting bunched up in. And so once you have something that you're satisfied with, then you're just gonna simply staple that down and you're good to go. Okay, 
So we have our final jean one. I love how this turned out and I really wanted to keep the elements of the American Eagle jeans because my sister was obsessed as a kid. So I kept the logo here. I kept the, you know, iconic jean pocket pattern and I really just emphasize the American Eagle in it. Um, but I love it. I think it's super cool. You know, it has a lot of pockets that can serve a lot of functions and then a ton of belt loops that you can use as hooks. So love that, love how this turned out. Think it's a great second edition. And then the other one, which was a new thing for me, I hadn't tried this before. I think this turned out really cool too and it's a great way to remember the tournaments, the sororities, whatever it may be that you were in and you got apparel from that you probably won't wear anymore but you still wanna keep. So I ended up doing, because they were pretty big logos, I did three panels of corkboard, one for each shirt. And for this, actually, the materials slightly changed because rather than using spray glue, I just used a regular stapler, but I have the time lapse video that I think showed that pretty well, and most people have a stapler, so it shouldn't be that big of a change. And then these, I would imagine, being kind of panels on a wall that you lined up together, a great centerpiece, or it could also be leaning up on a bookshelf, whatever you want. It can, you know, it's a cork board, so however you want to use your cork board. And yeah, I have these will be cut to good use now. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the project. I hope I explained the process well so that you guys can do this at home too. I think it's a great project. And yeah, thank you so much. If you like what you see, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Like the video, and I'll see you guys next week.